Welcome to Thunkworks. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be unboxing this. It's really cold today. Right, as you all already know from the title, this is a Metz uh, English wheel. Now, I've only opened the box to check all the parts are in there. Um, I haven't uh, haven't assembled anything yet. Oh, so we'll uh, get rid of some of this packaging. Oh. Uh, it's got a bit dusty because it's been in my workshop for about four weeks now. Um, but I've been uh, resisting the urge to open it up and have a play with it because I wanted to shoot this this video. Now, obviously, that's the mainframe. So, uh, some of the pieces. So that's the lower anvil uh, holder, I guess you call it. This is the T handle to adjust the pressure. Now, I've wanted an English wheel a long time, really. Um, a few years ago on a little welding course I did, I, um, I got the chance to have a play with one. I really enjoyed it. But if you've ever looked for them, you know they tend to be pretty expensive. Um, and that was of £500. Um, now this one's uh, in the region of, I think it's hundred. I think it was hundred eighty, around that. Um, I'll leave a link in the description um, to an Amazon page where you can get this, or even to I'll leave a link to the manufacturer's website. Now the first thing I need to do is figure out how to mount this. I think temporarily, for, just for this video, I'm going to put it in my vice on the bench here, uh, and then. In the future, when I build a welding table, um, I think I'll incorporate some kind of mounting system for this, so I can uh, I can have it in place when I want it, and then easily remove remove it so uh, it doesn't obviously get covered in welding spatter or anything else. So I've dug out a couple of scrap pieces of plywood, nice and conveniently sized, and I'm just going to use those to clamp the frame in the vise. So, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so the upper wheel is quite a tight fit between the this part of the frame. Um, but where the bearing sits, it's, it's, it's looser, so it shouldn't affect it. There we go. Put the circuit back on. So that's the upper wheel in place. Bearing seem nice. Ooh. I'm just gonna get a file. Yeah, there's quite a few rough edges. Now the now the circuit that I've just put back in place is already stretched. It's not really got any spring in it anymore, which suggests they're pretty cheap quality circlips. May have to upgrade the circlips in the future. Yeah, sort of lost its springiness. I'll fit the rack and then I'll uh, Put the axles in, mount them all on the, all in the rack, and then we'll uh, have a bit of a close-up look.
So there we have it all assembled. Um, so initial impressions, pretty happy. Bearings are all nice and smooth. You can probably give it a spin. Tiny bit of a wobble to the top wheel, but you see it slit. It doesn't sit quite straight in the uh, in the frame, but. Uh, if you can, if I can, if you can make that out. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you see there, the gap isn't actually parallel, so the wheels aren't set parallel. But it's not a huge issue because the bottom anvil has these Allen keys, uh, Allen key screws, so you can adjust them. So you can adjust. How it sits in the lower holder. So you'll be able, so well when I get around to using it, I'll be able to um, perfectly align them. It's a pretty good fit actually. And we can tighten up the thumb screw. Nice and solid. We can undo this, and then we can spin the uh, T bar at the bottom. You can obviously lower and raise the anvil, or lower, lower wheel, that's quite nice. Yeah, it's quite easy to get out, in and out. There's a couple of sharp edges, a couple of burrs in here, I want to go over. So these are all the anvils. You can see all the different shapes you get. So this one here is pretty much flat. And then the one at the far end is quite a tight radius on it. Unfortunately, this one has got some corrosion on the surface. It shouldn't. There's only a tiny bit on the actual crown. It shouldn't be a huge deal uh, when I'm using it. And there is quite a nice coat of, coating of oil on all of these, so I'm surprised at that. So there we go, it's all assembled. I'm just going to true it up. Uh, get that to there. Tighten it up. All the way down. But actually, the alignment isn't an issue, it turns out. One of the adjuster screws was just um, adjusted up just a tiny bit. Um, they're now sat nice and parallel, so I'm quite happy with that. Just prepared a small rectangle of sheet metal, just to have a little go. Just going to take any burrs off. Right, so my plan is I'm going to start with the uh, flat die. Uh, to see what happens. I'll do, I don't know few passes and I might with this sheet at least just work my way up one at a time through all the anvils and uh, see what happens. So right, let's give this a try then. I'm adjusting them so they're just in contact. So the frames do have some flex in these. I think that's one of the shortcomings of a small English wheel is the flex in the frame. It means you're actually limited how much pressure you can uh, apply. What I will do if I feel it needs more pressure, more pressure? That's not right. If I if I think the frame needs uh, some more rigidity, what I can do is uh, weld on a um, an upright at the back here, extend it up past the original frame, and then triangulate it. It'll give you some more strength. The frame itself, there's a little bit of twist there, but I think for a uh, for a hobby grade tool, and so far I'm pretty happy with it.
So I've been wheeling for a little while now. So I'm getting starting to get some nice shape on the panel. Um, I'm up to the fourth lower wheel now. And then I'm, I've noticed. So this is the flat wheel. And then they've each got a number stamped into them. So this has got nine, five. The one I'm currently using is a 2.5. We have a 1.5, a one and a half. 1.5 inch, you know, it's the, it's the size of the radius. So I'm going to leave this piece there now. Um, I've gone through to the uh, 1.5 inch uh, radius anvil. So this is the, the, uh, the well, panel I've made. It does have um, some shape this way. It is very subtle for what I want to do. So the main purpose for this for me is uh, helping to make repair panels for my Mark II Escort, which uh, I've got a couple of videos on and I will be doing work in the future on. Um, and I'm also planning to build some top rods and I want to build um, steel, possibly aluminium bodies for them. Um, and that's, this is going to be perfect for that. I mean, if you if you're working in a body shop or restore, you know, restoring classic cars, you know it's probably not going to be what you're looking for. But for a hobby, certainly a way to learn how to use an English wheel, learn the techniques and things. Um, I think this can't be beat. Really, 180 pounds. Off it's on Amazon. You can get it on eBay, um, and also there's a um, Mets. You can get it direct from Mets on their website. I'll, uh, I'll, as said earlier, I'll leave some just some links in the in the description, um, and then um, I'm just going to see how I get on with this now. Eh? So, thanks for watching. There'll be a link link in the description to my to my Instagram, um, where you can uh, keep up to date a bit more regularly with my my projects. Um, so thanks for watching.